Hello Muggles and welcome back to my Harry Potter kitchen, the YouTube series where I am baking my way through the Harry Potter books and making a recipe for all the food and drink featured inside. If you missed last week's recipe where we made these incredible sorting hat Hogwarts hamburgers, then make sure you check out the links down below in the description to find out which house you'll be sorted into. But it is Magic Monday, so let's see what recipe is waiting for us today. If, like me, you are obsessed with all things Harry Potter, then make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a thing from my Harry Potter kitchen. Hit the subscribe button, click on the notification bell, and you'll get an alert every Magic Monday when there is a brand new recipe. Speaking of new recipes, let's see what's waiting for us today. Okay, so Harry has just finished his hamburger and he's turned around to talk to Hagrid, who has disappeared, and that's pretty much where that chapter ends. So we're going to move on to chapter six, the journey from platform nine and three quarters. Harry's got his last month with the Dursleys, but before he disappears, he's got to ask them for one more favour to take him to King's Cross. He's just got there and read his ticket and knows he has to go from platform nine and three quarters. So obviously Vernon Dursley is laughing at him because he doesn't think it exists. Neither does Harry at this point. He is struggling to find out how to get to the platform, but he does overhear a family talking about platform nine and three quarters. So he's followed and asked them for help. And they do help him onto the platform where he sees this pretty impressive train and I also love the illustration in this book. It looks amazing. So Harry's just got on and got himself a compartment with someone who is Ron and they're talking about obviously his fame and pretty much what they're going to eat next. So I think you all know what's coming. Anything from the trolley, my dears? Harry, who hadn't had any breakfast, leapt to his feet, but Ron's ears went pink again and he muttered that he'd brought sandwiches. We're not making our wizard's treats yet, but let's go make some sandwiches. For this recipe, you'll need to make bread with 200 grams of strong white bread flour, half a tablespoon of fast action dried yeast, 250 milliliters of water, and an extra 450 grams of strong white bread flour, another half tablespoon of yeast, one tablespoon of salt and around 200 millilitres of water and I'll explain why these are separated in a bit. For our sandwich fillings we're also going to need some butter, red Leicester cheese, pickle, tomato and spinach. Okay so for this recipe as they are Ron's sandwiches I feel like they would be homemade by Mrs Weasley herself. So we're going to make some homemade bread and I absolutely love sourdough bread so that's what we're going to go for in this recipe. If you have yourself a sourdough starter already, then you can skip the first step and go straight to making the dough. But if you don't, I'm gonna show you a quick trick for how you can make a quick sourdough starter on the same day that you want to make this loaf of bread. To make our quick starter, I'm gonna place the flour and yeast into a bowl and mix it together. Slowly pour in your water, whisking it through until it forms a nice paste. Cover this with cling film and then pop it into a warm area so the yeast can start to activate it. The longer you leave it, the better it will be and the more flavour it will develop, but at least one hour is recommended. Once it starts to bubble up and doubles in size, it's ready to use. But as I mentioned, if you have your own sourdough starter, you can ignore that bit and start the recipe from here. For the main dough, place the rest of your flour into a bowl, add your yeast and your salt to separate sides and then make a well in the middle place your sourdough starter into the middle. Add in a splash of your water and then begin to bring the dough together. You might not need all 200 milliliters of water, so play it by eye and keep on adding it until you get a nice soft dough. If like me you're using a dough hook on a stand mixer then this will take about 5 minutes to knead, but if you're doing it by hand you want to keep going for about 10 to 15. Once it's nice and smooth and springy to the touch, you want to place your dough into a greased bowl, cover it with cling film and then place it into a warm area to rise for at least an hour until it's doubled in size. Once it's ready, knock back the air slightly and then knead your dough for another 30 seconds to a minute. Thank you. 
At this point you can begin to shape it, I've gone for a nice round loaf, place it onto a greased tray, cover it with cling film again and then pop it back in a warm place to rise. After an hour it should have doubled in size again and should be ready to bake. Just before we pop it into the oven, I'm going to carve a lightning bolt scar into the top of our loaf. You can either use a bread scorer, or if you don't have one, use a very sharp knife. Sprinkle an extra bit of flour on top for a nice rustic feel, and then bake it in the oven at 180 degrees Celsius for about 40 minutes. Now knowing when your bread is baked all the way through is key to getting the perfect loaf. And to do this you won't just be able to rely on your sense of smell, although it will smell wonderfully in your kitchen, you also need to use your eyes and believe it or not, your ears to test when it's done. To do this, wait until the loaf of bread goes nice and golden brown, take it out, let it cool a little bit so you can lift it up and then tap on the bottom of the loaf of bread. When you tap it, it should sound nice and hollow and that is a trick to know when your bread is ready. For our Ron inspired fillings, we're gonna go as orange and ginger as we can with an affordable British classic cheese and pickle. For this, we're gonna use an orange cheese, which is called Red Leicester, some pickles, tomatoes, and spinach. While your loaf of bread is cooling down, you can prep your filling by slicing your cheese into nice wedges and slicing your tomatoes. Next, you'll need to slice your bread with a serrated knife, and I've gone for quite large slices as it's a long journey to Hogwarts and we don't want Ron to get hungry on the way. Butter your loaf of bread and then it's time to lay on your fillings. I started with a bed of spinach, placed our cheese on top and then some tomato. Spread the pickle on the other side of your bread and then sandwich this on top. Just to make this easier to eat, I'm slicing them into three and then they are ready to serve. Ron is definitely in for a treat on his way to Hogwarts, so let's get these into a bag before he's late. So there you have it, another classic recipe. And now we are on the train to Hogwarts, so it's only gonna get more magical from here. If you don't want to miss a thing, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get an alert every time there's a brand new video. That is all for now, but I will catch you next time.